Good morning and welcome to St Paul's this fifth Sunday in Lent. As we are approaching Easter, uh, we can confirm that the Kirk Session has agreed that in-service worship, in-person worship, will begin again on Easter Sunday. So keep an eye out over the next couple of weeks as we work through all the different plans, but we are really looking forward to having worship with everybody here with us. This morning, our first hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness. God of endless mercy and unfailing love, our Creator, Saviour and Redeemer, as part of the body of Christ around the world, as people call to live for you in the families, communities and networks in which you have placed us, we gather together to worship you, to declare your goodness and offer our thanks and praise. Meet us here, we pray. Join our hearts in positive and enthusiastic worship. Breathe your word into our very being. Imprint your covenant of grace into our minds and hearts and nurture your character in us. Inspire and shape us. Unite and encourage us that our lives may reflect your love and justice to the world. Amen. Our first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31 and Carol is going to read this for us. A reading from Jeremiah 31 to 34. 
The Lord says, The time is coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judea. It will not be like the old covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them out by the hand and led them out of Egypt. Although I was like a husband to them, they did not keep that covenant. The new covenant that I will make with the people of Israel will be this. I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. None of them will have to teach a neighbour to know the Lord because all will know me from the least to the greatest. I will forgive their sins and I will no longer remember their wrongs. I, the Lord, have spoken. Lorraine is going to read for us from John chapter 12. Reading from John chapter 12 verses 20 to 33. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip. He was from Bethsaida in Galilee and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I am telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain, unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Those who love their own life will lose it. Those who hate their own life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me, so that my servant will be with me where I am, and my Father will honour anyone who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me? But that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, Bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven. I have brought glory to it and will do so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice and some of them said it was thunder, while others said an angel spoke to him. But Jesus said to them, It was not for my sake that this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. In saying this, he indicated the kind of death he was going to suffer. Thanks be to God for his word. The band Macapella are going to lead us in the hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. Stay one, stoop down and drink a 
and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all thy day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun, and in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. I looked to Jesus and I found in him my star, my sun, and in that light of life I'll Our last hymn talks of rest, revival and walking in the light. And our readings today talk of a route map from God of how this can happen. I'm not sure about you guys, but as Lent continues from what feels like over a year, I'm starting to feel more hopeful. The daffodils are out and with all the bright sunshine we've had this week, I continue to think of the three elements, rest, revival and walking in the light are all happening. The earth has rested and like us spending hours watching reruns of our favourite TV programmes, we're ready to move on to the next phase. We may be bored, lonely, sad and angry, but for many the enforced rest has made people reevaluate their lives and work towards what will the next chapter of their lives will be. So now comes the revival. And as the buds are appearing on the trees, the blossom is starting to poke through, we know that a new season is arriving. How do we approach this new time? As a country, we're looking forward to lockdown restrictions being eased as fewer people are in hospital and vaccinations are making people's lives safer. The walking in the light, hopefully on a Scottish beach or hillside in the warm sun or sun, doesn't feel too far away. We're hearing lots about new, new normal and new covenant. The one in Jeremiah is not unlike the is, is not like the ones that we've had before. It's not the one that has a single symbol, ark, the tablets, the serpent, but one that surrounds us all constantly, one of love. As a mark of the big change, God is saying that He will forgive all sins and no longer remember the wrongs. A complete new start, one where everything that has happened before is forgotten about. I remember early in my days working with pupils and staff in Smithycroft. There were certain young people whose negative reputation went before them, and there were certain staff who were similarly well known. I don't want to work with Tommy. He hates school and teachers and disrupts everything said one staff member. And the pupil would also say of the staff member, Mr Smith pure hates me. I can't do anything in the class without getting a punny. I loved going in and asking them both to treat each other like they'd never met. And both had to try their hardest for a week. At the end of the time, Tommy said, 
I was the best week at school. Mr Smith was so helpful. If I got stuck, he'd explain it in a different way and I'd understand. He made me feel so proud for learning. Similarly, Mr Smith said that Tommy was polite and a model pupil, listening and being attentive and was a real pleasure to teach. Not everyone can have a new beginning and it's difficult not to revert to old ways because after a few weeks, Tommy wasn't doing as well in class. The great thing about God is that no matter what our feelings are, no matter what we don't get right, God continues to love us. There is nothing that we can do that will stop God's love for us. In the second passage from John, Jesus spoke of his root map too. We've often heard Jesus' life that it wasn't the right time, that he would let his disciples and even his mother know when the time was right. Jesus spoke in the passage that the hour has come. This is the first time of that being said. We are now crescendoing towards Easter. But Jesus doesn't go for the expected. It turns out that their ideas of what they've been hoping for, expecting, have been far too small. Jesus turns to talk about seeds, that a seed seems to die when planted. It dies for the benefit of the crop that will follow. People would have been familiar with farming and allergies. Everybody would have known what wheat was. Nowadays, most folk don't know what it looks like. At St Paul's, we grow wheat and a vine branch is helping people to understand some of these Bible, Bible stories. But this story is about death and sacrifice and self-giving love. The hour, it seems, has come to reject the story of empire, status, power, wealth, fame, popularity, consumption. This is not just their own interests and lifestyle, which the story calls this life. This is not about their own selfish survival and interests and pleasures, which is the way the empire around them is selling them. Jesus' story is instead about a bigger plan, about God's plan. God's plan is not about empire, but about life they were made for. Life in all its fullness, the eternal kind of life, a life of selfless love. The victory in this story, the freedom will not simply over the last, last over the emperor, but in fact, much more than that. This is a story of victory over death, over the human addiction to mucking things up and over all the barriers that get in the way. Barriers between God and his people, barriers between his people and each other, and barriers between his people and his creation. We have endured the winter and the new signs of new life appear. Things must end for new exciting beginnings to happen. The wheat has to die for the new seeds to be sown. I often think about who are the people who have gone before us, who sown the seeds of love, compassion and humour that have changed the world for the better, creating a new harvest. This week, we said goodbye to Jimmy Keeney, a man who was a true gentleman. His family was huge, way more than could fit in the allocation for the chapel. I was discussing his life with my boys and Libby, who remembered many things about him, from sneaking biscuits at the back of the church, through to his humour at church parties and trips away. But the greatest thing that Jimmy did was to love. He genuinely cared about everyone. I would join him for lunch most Wednesdays at the lunch club. He'd always ask about my family, and family was so important to him. And when I returned the question, oh, he would delight in telling me the latest stories from his clan. He was always surrounded by friends, and he'll be one of the many missing from the tables when we reopen the lunch club. I've never known such a love for a partner as he had for Mary. Mary was a member here, and although Jim was Roman Catholic, he would still turn up at the church as he wanted to be near Mary's friends. With trips away at the adult group, 
at parties, at Hogmanay and Halloween. He was always the life and soul of the party. He will be deeply missed and his family and friends will be in our prayers. This weekend, while we've had the sunshine, the clouds are gathering. We have one eye on the better days to come, but recognise that we are approaching Holy Week, ready to walk that familiar story, ready to celebrate next Sunday Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. But even before that comes, this Tuesday night, the 23rd, will mark a year since the first lockdown. A year since our lives were transformed forever. At 7pm, people across the country will be lighting a candle. A little light to remember all those who have lost their lives. All those who have served others. All those whose lives will never be the same as they recover from this horrible disease. Families have been separated, friends unable to hug, people missing from tables. All of us have positively played our part and the strength of our community, country and world in tackling this is enormous. Today's passage talks of Jesus drawing everyone to him. It's with that knowledge that we go forward. The light wins over the darkness and that God's love is never ending. Let's join the nation to show that this light this Tuesday, by not only lighting a candle, but by being the light, by living with love, sharing the good news that brighter days are coming. We're now going to hear the hymn by Bernadette Barrow, Unless a grain of wheat shall fall. Loving God, we come before you today with thanksgiving. We are glad to know you through your Son, Jesus. We come to offer our prayers for the world and for all those who are suffering just now. We think especially of those who are ill or recovering from COVID and other illnesses. Be with them, Lord. Lord, we are grateful for the, the relationship we have with you and all it brings us. We pray for anyone who has yet to discover your invitation or for anyone who has previously turned it down. Lord, may they come to know you and love you. Lord, we are grateful for all the people you have blessed us to know and for all that those relationships mean to us. We pray for anyone who has lost touch or fallen out with a friend 
and who desires to reconnect and reconcile their relationship. Lord, we are grateful for all. Give of their time and talents to further your kingdom. We pray for those who are looking to follow you. May they choose to serve and follow where you lead. Lord, we are grateful for all who serve others in the medical services and in all the key worker roles and in a voluntary way through the many charities that help other people. In a moment's silence, we offer the people and places we know of where your presence and healing touch are needed today. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers and for promising to always answer them. Give us patience to wait and courage to serve. Amen. After today's service, there is a Zoom cafe from 11.30 to 12.15 and we'd be delighted if you'd pop in for a few minutes or stay for the full 45 minutes. It's great as usual to catch up with everybody. Our final hymn today is I the Lord of Sea and Sky. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow with that confidence and in that hope let us go in peace to serve the Lord all the days of our lives. Amen. Shine upon